um, Jiri Komarek from uh, MapTile. He's a head of marketing and also one of the OSM guys in the in the company. And um, he's going to present uh, OSM Carto as a vector tile. So that uh, the work they've done to adapt OSM Carto as uh, to to vector tiles. Okay. So thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, Thanks for being inter, uh, introduced. Uh, I'm Jiri Komarek. I am working for MapTire, uh, which is a company that builds digital maps, mostly from OpenStreetMap, and it's providing it for developers uh, via API or for GIS people as well. And uh, apart from this, like the commercial part, we are also quite uh, involved uh, in a lot of open source projects. Uh, you might know the Open Map Tiles. This is the tool for building uh, your own uh, vector tiles. This is something I will talk about later on. Uh, but we were also one of the uh, companies that started MapLibre. Uh, this is the library for displaying the maps on the website and in mobile applications. And we also uh, contributed or we created the QGIS plugin for displaying uh, vector tiles in QGIS. The support uh, uh, for vector tiles in QGIS was done by uh, another company, but we are one of the sponsors of this. This presentation uh, will be split into uh, several parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will talk a little bit about the theory, what are the vector tiles. Then I will tell you what are the advantages. Uh, why you should care about this technology and maybe start using it. Uh, then I will tell you a little bit more about the OSM Carto, how we uh, turn this uh, style, you probably know from the openstreetmap.org, uh, how we turn it into the style for the vector tiles. Uh, then how you can using it uh, in on web, in 3D, in QGIS. And the last part, uh, the most important, the most interesting one is about, uh, well, just wait for it. All right. So the first question is, uh, what are the vector tiles? Uh, who knows what are vector tiles? Can you raise your hand? Make sure that you really know what it is because I will ask one of you, what is the definition of vector tiles? So maybe you, you have to, your help. Okay, that's a nice definition. I'm not sure if it's like the best definition or the correct definition because I don't know the definition, but I can tell you how it works. But thanks for that. So basically, uh, uh, over here, you can see how the typical vector tiles uh, looks like. Uh, mostly they are done uh, in the Mercator projection, even though it's not like uh, you can do it in any projection, but uh, uh, the Mercator is the de facto standard on websites and in modern maps. And uh, it's split uh, into the tiles, exactly as you said. Uh, there is like uh, one tile uh, on the zoom uh, zero, which is split into four tiles on the zoom level one, and each of these tiles is again split into four tiles uh, in uh, the next uh, zoom level, and so on and so on. Uh, these tiles are available uh, on the ZXY address, where Z stands for the zoom level. So over here, you can see the one uh, is the zoom level one. So it's over here is the zoom level zero. Over here is the zoom level one, and X and Y stands for the uh, row and for the column, or for the column and the row. Uh, something else? I think that's about it. So far it sounds pretty similar to raster tiles, right? So what is the difference then? So uh, the traditional raster tiles, uh, you will get uh, as PNG or WebP or, or JPEG uh, images that are like next to each other. Uh, in vector tiles, uh, you will get the data in PBF format, which stands for protocol binary format. Uh, 
the data over here is not uh, image, but uh, uh, they are like vectors. Uh, they are much smaller. Uh, here I put some statistics for like Word, Italy, and uh, Firenze, Florence. Uh, so you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty small. Uh, but uh, if you just open this data, uh, you will see something like uh, on this image over there. It's quite boring, right? Because what you are looking at, they are just like pure data, and you need to add the style uh, to create this beautiful, beautiful map. So, how to make the style? Uh, the style is a style JSON file, uh, which is like made based on the Mapbox GL style specification. Uh, the style JSON contains like multiple layers. Uh, each for like uh, different uh, different uh, uh, type of uh, information, and this style uh, you can either do it like manually, as you can see here. That's completely fine, but a little bit hard, I would say. So therefore, there are some uh, style editors. Uh, the one I'm like showing is like the one you can find on the mapstyle.com/cloud. Uh, so this is really easy to use, uh, well, but there are some others if you like to. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in, these, uh, in these editors, uh, you can either work with uh, all the layers uh, together. So you can say like uh, all the water over here uh, should change the water from, uh, from blue to red or whatever you uh, want to, or probably you just want to have it a little bit darker blue or lighter blue. Uh, we have also like the advanced editor uh, where you can really work like with the individual features. So you can say uh, that the uh, rows on the level three, uh, they should have like a different color and they should change this color when you are zooming in or uh, becoming uh, more opaque or things like this basically but it's more advanced and, well, if you get into it, it's a lot of fun, but uh, you need to spend some time on this. Another advantage is, a huge advantage is uh, of the, uh, sorry, one, uh, one more thing I forgot here. Uh, it's like, if you want to create a different style, uh, with raster style, you need to build like the new set of tiles. So you need to render the entire planet again over here. You take just the one data, and you need to create only the new uh, style JSON, which is a file that has like a few hundred of kilobytes, which is really small, and you can use it for the same data. So with the one data, you can have like thousands or, well, I put here infinite number of the map styles. The same goes for the languages. Uh, if you want to change the language uh, of the raster tiles, Again, you need to render the entire tile set, or you can use some hacks like put the labels into separate layer and then show it together. Well, this is not something you want to do, but it's possible. But uh, with vector tiles, it's really easy. Actually, uh, you can uh, you can have also like automatic detection based on the user browser. So whenever someone comes and has like a Browser set to Italian, you, you will show uh, all the map labels, uh, all the countries and cities in Europe or all over the world in Italian. Uh, if someone joins from China, uh, you will show the map labels uh, in the Chinese and so on and so on. Or it can be done also based on the IP address of the or the location of the person. Or you can change it manually. This is really up to you. Or what you can also have, you can have like two uh, two labels at the same time, whatever you want. Uh, in open styles, the project uh, uh, we developed for uh, creating the vector tiles, uh, we have currently more than 70 languages. If your favorite language is missing, we are really keen to edit. Just feel free to send a pull request and it will be probably much soon. Uh, another advantage, uh, it's like the disputed borders. Uh, this is also something you can change. 
based on the viewer's perspective or based on your perspective. Uh, probably this is something uh, you are familiar with, uh, the situation. Uh, so you can show, for instance, uh, in some countries, I know this is the issue, well, this is a quite harsh situation here, but there is the issue with like Argentina and Chile. They have like a dispute, they are not fighting about it, but uh, they have this issue over there. So if someone joins from Argentina, uh, this person can uh, see that this particular area belongs to Argentina and the same for the people from Chile. And as I said, uh, all of this, uh, uh, for making this all of this happen, uh, you can use this open source open map tiles project, uh, which is a project for generating the vector tiles. Uh, it contains the cartographic schema, uh, also like the rendering part. Uh, the entire project is uh, made by the community. Yes, we started it and we maintained it, but the community is really active and uh, a lot of people and also companies is contributing to this. So if you are interested, just have a look at it, download it, test it, and feel free to join. Uh, we are using like multiple data over there. So as I said, uh, we are using the OpenStreetMap, that's our base for most of our maps. Uh, for like higher zoom levels, uh, we are using natural air data for land cover, and we are using big data for these translations. So as I said, these 17 languages, uh, we have quite covered uh, a lot of cities thanks to the connection to the wiki data. And as I said, this, uh, that is active project. So uh, the version 3.13 was released like early this year. And right now we are working on the version 3.14. If you don't want to like bother with all these technical things and you just want to test it because you are like uh, the end user or you just want to do it fast, then I would recommend to go to Maptire Cloud, where everything, what I said, is available, it's really easy to use. So just go there and check it. And what you can already see on the background, this is something you are quite familiar with, right? More or less, this map looks like OpenStreetMap.org, but it is not. Uh, this is the OpenStreetMap uh, Carto style, uh, which we took and uh, we uh, turn it as a style uh, for for a vector tile. So right now I will show you a few slides on different zoom levels. So can you say like uh, if it's OSM.org or if it's uh, our implementation of the OSM Carto? <laughs> okay, I am happy that you cannot. <laughs> And here. <laughs> uh, how was it made? Ah, yeah, here we are. So the preparation, uh, the, uh, actually, uh, this style was done by my colleague, uh, Nicolas Bozon, uh, who is our main cartographer, actually a great cartographer. Uh, so he took uh, all the all the visuals that were available uh, and try to uh, remake it uh, using uh, using our advanced editor. Uh, so first thing that is really important are the like the really typical colors. Uh, uh, then the land cover. Uh, what you can see here, it's not only the land cover itself or the color of the of the land cover, but also the textures. Uh, land use, and of course we cannot uh, miss the we cannot miss the icons and map labels. And now, uh, how you can use it? So the best uh, best option is uh, is using vector tiles. Well, vector tiles are available for a leaflet for open map tiles. That's true. We have some plugins, and it somehow works. 
But the really best way uh, how to use the full power of vector tiles is using the MapLibre, uh, which is, as I said, the project, uh, the mapping uh, library, the JavaScript library uh, for, for web and for mobile devices. Uh, yeah. You can also, if you use this style from Mephtar Cloud, you can rasterize it. If you have some use case when you need to use uh, raster tiles, then this is an option. We also provide the WTMS service for some older uh, GIS uh, systems and static maps for the website. All right. And uh, this is something uh, which you probably haven't seen before. This is your favorite map style done in 3D. Uh, this, is done, uh, this is possible via MapLibre. Uh, this uh, functionality came to MapLibre just a few months ago with MapLibre 2.1. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, you can uh, also use uh, vector tiles in QGIS for one year, more than one year. Uh, the easiest way, again, uh, we provide this uh, Mephtar plugin for QGIS. Uh, you can fully use it like for your base map uh, if you need it for your project. Or uh, you can print the OpenStreetMap or any map made, uh, made from the OpenStreetMap, any style uh, made from the OpenStreetMap in really high resolution. So uh, these are the open source projects I mentioned uh, in the presentation. So go to, the, go to this website and check them out. And as I said, uh, the most important information uh, will be at the end. Right now, uh, we, are, we have a discussion, ongoing discussion with the OpenStreetMap Foundation about adding vector tiles uh, to the OpenStreetMap.org website. Uh, so, uh, what we propose is like to using the OpenMap style schema uh, for this, and uh, we are also providing the Carto style uh, as open source. It will be soon uh, released as open source on GitHub, uh, available for everybody. Yeah, I think that's it. If you are interested, as I said, go to the Mapstar Cloud, uh, try this service uh, with all the technology and cool features uh, I was talking about. And if you are interested in what we are doing, if you want to uh, see the latest news, then follow us on our social media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jiri for uh, your presentation and really on time. Also, we have a couple of minutes more to to have questions. Um, before coming to you um, and audience, uh, I have I see here a few questions. One was uh, um, I start from this one because you already uh, answered. If the Carto um, style was released uh, is released uh, with open license, so. You can mention maybe the, the time frame where you think uh, it would be available? Soon. Soon, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as well as uh, SVG icons, do you know whether the icons behind probably is? Yes. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> My colleague over there. Yeah, there, so, so it means was nothing. <laughs> yeah. So um, another question is about um, the attribution requirement for uh, open map tiles. Um, so, do a user using um, the open source open map tiles with OSM have to add a specific attribution, or is the usual OSM attribution enough? Maybe it's, it's a bit technical, uh, but currently uh, there is the open map tiles attribution required. And that's it. <laughs> yes, that's it for now. Okay. okay, so far we. But follow us on the social media, so maybe you okay. will see something over there. Okay. And another question that has another uh, an upvote uh, was about having added new features or layers to the open map ties vector schema. I think uh, com 
compared to the, the SM1? Uh, well, actually, it's possible. Uh, how it works right now, uh, we want to create like the open map tiles, the core, we want to keep it as the base map. That was like the idea. And if you want to have uh, something more, uh, then the best way is to create the new overlay uh, specifically for you. Because uh, if we add more and more features, we can do it, but then the planet will really like start to grow. So we want to uh, balance it uh, on the level where we have like all the important features for the base maps, but uh, not too much of them. So okay. the best thing, uh, if you want to add something, if you think something important is missing, uh, then just talk to us and yeah, let's see. The question was also that if you uh, you you've already added something on top of the current uh, cartos style. If I understood well, did you have add features or layers to ah, the open okay. tile mm. open map tiles back to the tile schema? Not an expert on the on the carto, but I don't think so. Not. Okay, it could happen, but there, there are some. Sorry, for for the audience. <laughs> yeah, the entire project is on uh, GitHub, uh, and uh, there are great. There is great development on Americana style on uh, uh, OpenStreetMap, which should be highlighted here. I guess the people working on Americana are here as well. Uh, so that's a style of a roadmap uh, on top of OpenMap tiles, on top of OpenStreetMap, and they contributed quite a lot of the features as well which are similar features like now in OSM Carto. Uh, and, uh, and there is more, more development going on on the community. So anybody who wants to add any kind of things into open map tiles, it's just pull request and, and code is on GitHub. So either you make a fork or you, and you maintain it or you propose, propose it to the project back. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, um... I would ask you in the audience if you have uh, questions. Okay, I see one mm -hmm. there up and another one there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not quite clear about um, the open map task. You, you've been uh, talking about that, and let's say it's, it's the base and um, everything is in an open map ties and the 70 languages and all that. When I look at the GitHub repository and at the website, um, the schema hasn't been updated in years. The uh, styles, they haven't been updated in years. Um, there's not in the schema, if you look at the documentation, there's only two languages and they are not 70. So, so I'm a bit, I, I don't understand um, uh, sort, of, sort of what's there. And it, it looks like I have to go to maptiler.com um, and uh, to, to get all of that. If you go to openmaptiles.org and look at the schema, um, you see two languages, not 70. Um, if you look at the GitHub, um, uh, Open Map Tile, GitHub repository, there's several styles there. Uh, they have not been updated in years, the GitHub repositories. So I'm, I'm just, can, can you exactly say where those things are? Because I couldn't find them. Uh, I'm not sure where you have been looking at, but if you go to openmaptiles.org slash languages, there is quite a lot of languages, but maybe we haven't updated somewhere. Um, the the sure. schema documentation on openmaptiles.org, if you click on schema, you get the definition of all the schemas, and it says language German and English you can have. It doesn't say anything about all the many languages. Sorry, without the, the microphone, uh, the, the audience okay. that, uh, doesn't get it. Yeah, the, the code base is in the, in the GitHub. It's, it's the complete latest release. Also, it's updated as well. Maybe it's slightly behind on, uh, on the latest one. And we are changing the, the proposals on the pull request because if people are contributing, they were not always updating the documentation. And uh, the, the languages itself are, there are six languages in the older version. 
and it has been updated, so now it's a parameter uh, behind. So that's why it's not part of the documentation because there's this 70, and it's not 70 attributes. It's uh, it's column and name of the language, but it has been documented in the GitHub in the issues when the new language uh, proposal implementation was was done. But but yes, you are right. The documentation should be improved, as always with the open source projects. <laughs> But all everything is in the GitHub at openwebtiles uh, at github.com slash openwebtiles slash openwebtiles uh, is the is the official implementation with all the code base and it, it's also self-documenting because of the YAML files so you know what attributes are there and and how to how to approach them. It's relatively straightforward to have a look at the code of the layer and at the attributes of that layer inside. Sorry, we let's try to move to the second question, please. If not, uh, we don't have time. Maybe you can you can talk each other a bit yes. later. Yeah. Okay. Very happy. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Wow. Self-documenting YAML files sounds fun. Um, yeah, several years ago, I gave a similar talk, porting OSM Cardo to vector tiles and um, using a very different approach and very different technique, and it didn't work very well. Um, so I'm very interested to see when you have something, um, you know, done actually released and stuff, and we sort out the attribution stuff and all that open sourcey stuff, then that'd be something I will definitely play with and probably bother you on GitHub. That, that was actually more of a comment than a question. <laughs> release stuff. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Andy and I'm the original maintainer of the OpenStreetMap Carto project. I love what you're doing, OpenStreetMap Carto is open source for a reason. We want people to reuse the code and reuse the ideas. But I have to ask the question, why did you choose a name OSM Carto for a commercial project developed by a commercial company? Do you not think that OSM Carto as a name and a brand is a bit confusing? compared to a community project called OpenStreetMap Carta. Uh, well, actually, because uh, we want to say that uh, this is like uh, inspired by the OSM Carta, and we also like, uh, as I said, we want to make it open source. So the the purpose was like uh, to develop it for the for the open stream map so that's why we thought it's a good idea yeah i i would say maybe in retrospect asking the maintainers what they think before the maintainers first find a commercial project available with that name yeah sure but you can imagine like if a commercial company makes an open stream map editing software called, I don't know, Hosm or Gosm or, you know, so similar to an existing project, I think perhaps it would be good to, to talk to the maintainers first. So we can have a last question from here for a gentleman here. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm I'm Ben. Um, so I uh, I wanted to build a style sheet based on open map tiles for uh, cyclists, and I noticed there's a lot of stuff missing. Uh, and I was wondering if it would be um, okay to well to try and get it to uh, add this information to the open map tile schema. But I was wondering where is the limit of what you will add to the vector tiles because. Eventually, if everyone comes up with their own use cases, the tiles will become, well, basically everything that is in OpenStreetMap. So where is the limit and what's the use case you see and how far will this go for open map tiles? And is it worth for me to put in the work to do that? Uh, as, I, as I already mentioned, uh, the original idea of the, of the open map tiles was to create like the base map. So something uh, everybody will use. And uh, some specific use case uh, will be uh, will be uh, hold somewhere somewhere else. So it is on the discussion with us. Uh, probably the best idea is like just to talk to us 
uh, maybe on the uh, here on the conference and see like uh, what are your ideas, what how we see it, and yeah, we can come up to the conclusion. Great. Do you want to add something to the answer? Okay. Uh, for the specific project, it's recommended that you make uh, use the tool set and make your own uh, own uh, GitHub repo. So if you have something like a C specific uh, tile sets, it's quite easy to combine the base map with the specific tile sets on top of it. There was a talk about it on the last step, state of the map. So have a look at the step by step guide on how to how to do that. And feedback on uh, on the branding, the, the word Carto is not used on the product itself uh, it's it's uh, we, we call it open street map style in in uh, in there and it's really we are trying to help the community as much as we can and this is going to be all open uh, so uh, ho hopefully it's welcomed yeah. thank you very much for uh, for this we don't have more time for questions so you can meet, I think, in the in the lobby or uh, during the the lunch. Thank you again, Jiri, for for the presentation. Thank you.